way to describe it. It's a little bit like a debate, and it's a little bit like a presentation that's judged. Uh, kind of a speech event, if you will. Um, it's an idea that uh, originated in Soviet Union circles a long time ago and brought to the U.S. partly by, largely by Tatiana Schumann, who has done all the heavy lifting for this particular set of wrangles today, but she asked me to do the uh, intro, so I'm happy to do that. But I do want to tell you that Tatiana is the one who's uh, really the driving force behind this. So uh, I want to introduce some other folks that uh, are First of all, I want to introduce our teams. Let's see, we have team, is team one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Team one. <laughs> going. I, got, I got to correlate a name and, and a name here. Okay. So we have team one um, is Jesse Gainsburg from Georgetown Day School, Marcus Borstein from Georgetown Day School, and Alex Smith, who is not from Georgetown. <laughs> Pinch hitting this afternoon for uh, well, another one of the team that wasn't able to be here. Team two on this side, Danny Zhang from Georgetown Day School, <coughs> David Gunby from Georgetown Day School, and Matthew Kassman, also pinch, hit, pinch hitting. He's from Sidwell, but he uh, uh, works on math team with uh, Georgetown Day. So uh, their coach, who has coached them in the back here, is Andy Lips. So, we have an esteemed panel of judges up here. Um, this side is Lesek Garowick. Carlo Resky, Rosita Marinova, Paul Zeitz, and Jason Ermer are our four judges. And uh, does everyone have a copy of the rules so you can see how this is working as we go along? It will become clear what we do. Oh, I should have mentioned Dave Keppelman is our, is our timekeeper up here, and he will be the one who uh, moderates as the students get up and uh, their uh, presentations. Okay, so does everybody have a copy of the rules? So that to follow along as it's going. And does everybody have a copy of the problems? It's problem set two. Okay, I see some pinch shaking. No, Tatiana in the back has a problem. <coughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll get those passwords. Tatiana, can you hand a couple of extras to Bob or somebody and then they can bring them forward? Okay, good to see them. All right, good. we're going to start here in just a second with a coin flip. Um, you want to call? Can you? Hey, you have a tail. Comes up heads, we'll be going first. Comes up tails, we'll be uh, going fast. We'll call heads, okay. So, we're going to call heads, tails. It's just like the NFL. It's tails. So you're up first. Okay, so, with that, I'm going to get out of the way, and uh, we'll make a few comments at the end. Uh, we'll let Ed, okay, and the timing. So, we'll uh, say what you want to do. Yeah, two minutes if you need it. Thank you. 
So that so then we're so then we're trying to place two A's, three B's, four C's, and five D's. The so, so first we just ignore all the A's and D's and look at the order we put the B's and C's in. So we know that there's a, there can't be any two consecutive D's or two consecutive C's because the B can be followed by a C or a D. And then if we put in A's or D's in middle of them, then that's the change which can be followed by. Because, but, because if you put in a, a D right before a, a C, then if you put in a D right after a B, then the next one is the next one. So there's no two consecutive B's or C's, so B's or two consecutive C's, and they're trying to place three B's and four C's. So they have to go C, B, C, B, C, B, B, C. And then now we push back, now we push back in the A's and D's, which are what so, so we know that the A's, the A's can any A's have to go after a C. Go out, can't go out to the beginning, and you can always go, go after a C. So, so there's four spots to put to our two A's. So we just use a star, star and bars argument to get that number of ways to put the A's back in.
we get the same equation as we got up here. The absolute value of y equals negative 3x over 4 plus 60. So that was just our continue down here with a slope of um, negative 3 on up here with the slope of negative 3 fourths. Sorry. Up here with a slope of negative 3 fourths, and down here with a slope of 3 fourths, again, um, because this is not drawn to scale, but because um, the uh, whatever is above the x axis will also be below the x axis. And so we calculate the area here. We know that this distance is 12, so the area of this triangle, since this is 30, is 6 times 30, which is 180. And we know the area of this triangle is 20 divided by 2 is 10 times 30, so 300. So our final area enclosed is 480 because this is unbounded. So 480 is unbounded. I just have uh, two little points that I think could have made it a bit more of an efficient presentation. And that is, for one, there's no unbounded region. That is to say that this line that you draw down here, you say is going to be unbounded. But the fact of the matter is that once it crosses over into below the x-axis, that is implying that y is negative. And when we look at the absolute value, therefore this part right here is more or less extraneous. Also, when you're computing the area, which you did at the end, I think you could have done just slightly quick, uh, better by saying that instead of dividing into two triangles using a vertical line, you could have had two triangles that are the same, equivalent triangles, by drawing a horizontal line. And that would have had a base of 32 and a height of 15, so it would have been 32 times 15. Divided by 2 times 2, but because there's two of the same triangles, and it would have just been a slightly quicker uh, way to finish an otherwise elegant solution. And that's what I just said.
We, essentially, the score we gave was uh, uh, one half to six and a half, but we rounded it to zero to seven. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Just a point of clarification, I was, on the, I was on the impression that the rebuttal could get anywhere from zero to seven points independently of the initial presentation scale of zero to seven points. Or is it a zero to seven Yeah, so in, the, in your rebuttal, you, you, your comment about the triangles was, was, was correct, but the, the comment about the negative y was incorrect because the equation is the set of all x and y that make it that make that equation true, and so it can admit negative points. So, so it actually does have to come. Um, it, it, it does continue on. Um, but it would have been a little trickier to try this. So, and you did make the type of the So that's it. But anyway, put it around it to the shot. Okay, so Steve's turn. Three. And so this leaves us with a few different options for what 
x squared and y squared could, or 3x squared plus 1 and y squared plus 10 as pairs could be. And the first would just be 1 times 507. The second would be 3 times 169. And the third would be 13 times 39. Now, note that basically one of these numbers is going to have to be equal to y squared minus 10. So we're going to say which of these following six numbers, uh, when, had, when 10 is added to it, makes a perfect square. And 11, 517, 13, 179, and 23. None of those are perfect squares. So the only one we have left is 39 plus 10. 39 plus 10 is 49, which is a perfect square. So we know that this factors into our 3x squared plus 1 will be equal to 13, and y squared minus 10 will be equal to 39, because obviously if the y squared minus 10 part of it is going to be equal to the 39, the other part is equal to 13. So then we do some basic algebra, and we get that x is equal to 2, because x squared is 4, 3x squared is 12, x add 1, it's easy stuff. And then we have y squared is equal to um, 49, and from here, we have to put these back into the context of the problem, which is to say to solve for 3x squared y squared. And we just sub in 3 times 4 times 49. And then this adds up, to, or this multiplies out to be 588. And that is our solution.
wasted a few seconds, which we'll never get back to. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
plus the 64 options that come with k equals 3 and, uh, and the second case of 5 to the k is unrestricted. And we um, add 64 and 48 and we get um, 112. <coughs> Um, we, just to clear up a few other tail nits and nats, um, we, we notice that there can't be another factor of anything other than 2 or 5 in um, either A, B, or C because their least common multiple doesn't have any factors of 2 and 5. We, and we, for the similar reason, we know that, that it's a similar to the reason we present, I presented that C is 2 to the fourth times 5.
but not necessarily both because um, these okay, kind so, of the, so the top one, what the, so so they both are referring to two powers of five. Uh, yes, there, this is when k equals when, when the k being the um, exponent right. five uh -huh. here is three. The um, the uh, <coughs> least common multiple of b and c will be. Um, will be 2 cubed times something, no matter whether B has a 0, 1, or 2. Great. So I, 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 I want a clarification about those two lines, the 64 and the 48. What, what, are they, what do each of those refer to with regard to um, of 5? The 64 is the number of cases, um, the, num the number of opportunity, or the number of, uh, when K equals 3, you can have 64 um, variations for so, okay, a so the top B. one is k equals 3, and the yes, bottom, and the one, bottom is one is k equals 0, 1, or 2, 16 being okay. the value okay, for thanks. each one okay. of these. Okay, that, that, that's, what I, that's what I was un unclear about. Um, okay. So, So uh, um, this was a, a good solution, although it was incorrect, and uh, the rebuttal was correct. Um, it's, the accounting error was quite subtle. I know my, uh, my college students have made that error, the very same argument, but it's, it's an honorable, honorable error. <laughs> Nevertheless, the judges reluctantly could not award any points to the judges this time. But last uh, <laughs> three points to this team, three points to this team. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We okay. want no problem. Really? That's, right. But it's not fair. <laughs> 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 the team that's behind. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So we're going to arbitrarily assign C to be at the origin. Um, we're going to assign A to be at coordinates A comma X. And we're going to assign B to be at coordinates B comma Y. Now, if we draw the third median, which is going to look somewhere like that, so that we know that this is the centroid, and we know therefore that this length is going to be twice the length of this, and similarly this is twice the length of this, and this is twice the length of that. Those are just from properties um, of the triangle. Um, so bearing that in mind, we are now going to find some things out about this line and this line. We know from the midpoint formula that the coordinates of this are going to be a over 2 comma x over 2, and similarly, these, this is going to be at b over 2 comma y over 2. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find this length in relationship to this length. So we're going to do the Pythagorean formula, and we're going to have that b over 2, oh, sorry, and we also know that 2x plus 4 and x plus 3 intersect at 
and we have one and two, which is easy enough to solve for. Um, so as I said, we know that this length is twice the length of this. So to find this length, we're going to have that the quantity b over two plus one squared two minutes plus y over two minus two squared is going to be equal to two root um, two root a plus one squared plus x minus two squared. So now we are going to start solving this and we're, we square both sides. We have that b over two plus one squared plus y over two minus two squared equals four quantity a plus one squared plus x minus two squared n quantity. We bash these out and we have that b squared over four plus b plus one plus y squared over four minus one minute um, minus two y plus four equals four quantity a squared plus two a plus one plus x squared minus four x plus four. We take out the four and we have b squared over sixteen plus b over four plus one fourth plus y squared over sixteen thirty seconds minus y over two plus one equals a squared plus two a plus one plus plus one plus x squared minus four x plus four. Now we're going to do the same thing for this line. So we're going to leave this equation, we're going to erase this equation, and we're going to start again. With this line, what this is going to find out is we notice that this distance is going to come out looking very similar Time. to this distance. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's the answer? Could you, could you at least say what your answer is? Oh, we have not the answer. <laughs> 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 If we didn't know what to just say, oh, well, this is that, because he didn't, he didn't have it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I just read through the rules. This is my first time, but yeah. So they didn't have a solution, so it's hard to 
find a flaw in a not solution. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then, then maybe the jury can pick up some glass here. So, um, so uh, um, what's your justification for putting the right angle at zero comma zero? Because these, this is one line and this is another line and therefore all that matters is that the ratio of this to this and this to this stay correct. So all that really matters is as long as we shift, if we hold these, if we hold these two lines steady and we rotate the along an arc such as this, this is still going to stay here and this is still going to stay at its midpoint. So it doesn't matter where we, so, it, so we're allowed to fix one point in space. But well, what about the, the, the median, the, 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 the hypotenuse too? Well, the hypotenuse is just a function of where the three, um, of the three, um, of the three points. And the fact that we're rotating this in a circle means that the radius, is, this is now the radius of a circle with radius A, B is going to stay constant. So the so, so which is what circle? We're, we're so, the so, circle. so what I'm saying is that if we if we move if we move a triangle ABC around in space, we can what, what, rotate what center, it. What, what, what's your oh, center of okay, then, then let me rephrase it. If we don't think of it as rotating as a circle, if we think of it as simply <laughs> moving this, as long as this isn't oh I see. Um, <laughs> Um, in that case, this in that case, doing this is not justified. Great effort! Great effort! <laughs> You can prove that the right angle is not an Yeah, because if this was from the point negative one to the right angle, it should be 20. Do we have to add up to seven points? Yes. Oh, okay. So then, uh, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, then this kid gets no points, obviously, because you didn't, you, you had no, no mathematical contribution. Um, you have negative one point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, and. Uh, one point, yeah. And then we'll, and we reluctantly will have to take six points. Okay, <laughs> 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 but really we should have well, given you negative points, off. like negative twenty points, and we get so that's oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's uh, excessive. Yeah. <laughs> Negative 20? All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was, uh, that was a great, great. Woo! I was about, I have some notes here for myself, um, and I was about to say this was the first session I've ever seen chaired by Paul where the jury got no points, where the jury got shut out. <laughs> but at the last minute, he snatched it. <laughs> <laughs> he the jaws of the feet. <laughs> One, if you also look at the rules, you'll see that one of the rules is that all the participants get a uh, prize, a reward. <laughs> Often it's snacks, but uh, of course snacks are not possible out here in the Smithsonian. So we have some alternate for you. We have uh, a set of AMC play cards. Uh, I think Alex, you're going to get a second set here for uh, doing this twice. But if you want to take one back, no, he didn't. Well, he didn't do it last. He didn't do it. He didn't. You didn't do it. Okay. Fairfax people were here, but he wasn't. Okay, you weren't. All right, great. Well then, okay. So that's for you. And we also have. Let's see. Also have a copy for the uh, <laughs> set for the <laughs> coach. That's great. And so Andy, if you want to send that up.
Thank you. Thank you. From the MAA for each of you. Um, and this is a book of Math Circle Adventures, co authored by uh, Tatiana Schumann. Nice. So. Okay. I'm not an author, I'm an editor. Editor, okay. So these were uh, from the book. Is, <laughs> this one. And we have well, it looks right. books here also for <laughs> Andy, uh, for each of you. So, uh, okay, but, uh, this was an abbreviated session. We had an hour, and we've actually gone over by five minutes, I see. Uh, typically, uh, the whole session would take about 90 minutes, and that would allow enough for both teams to go three times, uh, taking their full full a lot of time. So this was a slightly abbreviated session and obviously we had five problems which leaves a uh, possibility for an unbalanced score at the end. So um, know that uh, if you would like to do this, uh, budget about 90 minutes for a full session. That's one thing to note. Uh, let's see, second, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning, I don't think. I'm Steve Dunbar. If you don't already know me, I know many, many people already in the room. But uh, I'm the direct MAA Director of Mathematical Association of America director for American math competitions. One of the things we're interested in doing is promoting these math wrangles. Um, I think these are a nice complement to, uh, to, the, to the AMC competitions, which are a, a heads down, paper and pencil kind of a thing. These promote a lot of different skills in mathematics that we'd like to see uh, students and teachers, for that matter, have. And so I've just jotted down a few of the things that a math wrangle promotes. So certainly problem solving is one that's obvious. but. More than just solving problems, I think we need to emphasize that mathematics is not only about problem solving, but it's about problem presentation. Problem presentation in an efficient and uh, careful way. And so we emphasize that kind of public speaking aspect of it. In that way, it's like a, like a speech uh, tournament or a debate tournament, which is what I often compare this to for <coughs> an idea, the kind of thing that we're trying to uh, get across here. Another one of the skills that we want to emphasize in this is the skill of careful listening and critical thinking. It's emphasized in the rules that the rebuttal is supposed to address the solution given. And so you have to pay attention to what the other side is doing so that you can, in turn, critically analyze, critically think about what they have said and uh, offer your uh, suggestions or your corrections to that. So, so we want to emphasize all those kinds of things. We'd like to see this idea of math wrangles spread. And so, uh, I think if you, everybody should have a copy of the rules. We're tweaking the rule, when I say we, Tatiana and I are, are working together with a number of other people too, uh, and we're refining the rules. I've jotted down a few more suggestions. We'll probably uh, refine the rules one more time again and send them to Ed, who will post them on the Math Circles website. And so if you'd like to download a copy, uh, there will be a copy of those Math Circle uh, or excuse me, math wrangle rules. And we'd like to see you try and adopt this at your math circle. If you're doing a math circle for students, this is an excellent way to prepare for math competitions, for math contests. It's an excellent way for students to learn lots and uh, learn not only the problem solving, but also teach others in the process about the problems that they have solved. Uh, math circles for teachers, we've tried this in various ways at math circles for teachers if you're doing that. This is another excellent uh, skill for sharpening teachers' problem-solving skills in a kind of a fun, competitive way. Um, and finally, you can use this in classrooms and courses in an abbreviated way. If you're teaching just about anything, um, this is a nice interlude for you to see how your students are, are doing on this. So if you have any questions, you can talk to uh, Tatiana. She has lots of experience with this. She's done this with her San Jose Math Man Circle. You can talk to me, you can certainly talk to any of the, the judges up here, you can talk to Ed, who's seen and time cap for a number of these already. So thank you for attending. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to the two teams. Excellent.